my fellow dream chasers and Disney fans across the world, and welcome to the latest episode of Kingdom of Isolation, where in times of trouble, why not isolate yourself with the magic of Disney? And today, we are concluding our trip through the 70s with The Rescuers, also released in 1977, making this the first time since 1940 that we had two films released in the same year. The Rescuers is based on uh, the book series by Marjorie Sharp. The two books in particular are The Rescuers and Miss Bianca and of course it wouldn't be the Kingdom of Isolation without having a guest on board he's covered he's covered many a film with me on the show he's covered Dumbo he's covered Bambi Lady and the Tramp and he was also here for the one year anniversary my good friend over at Movies and Milk Mr. Michael McGorry hello again Fraser thank you again for having me back on yeah it's a, it's been a while yeah, it it it, def- it definitely has been a while, and um, and uh, don't, and don't worry, folks. I'll be sh- I'll be sure to get him slotted in somewhere for the uh, Renaissance period, depending on what slots I have still available. Which uh, which given which given the um, given what I've got penciled in already, uh, haven't haven't really got that many slots left to fill in. But uh, of course, if plans changed. I've always, I've always got I've always got Michael on hand to to help with that. I'm a good backup. I'm a good backup. Yep. Yeah. He's effect, effectively my wingman, if you will. The um, <laughs> uh, uh, I was like, which, whichever way you want to put it, Maverick and Iceman here. Which, whichever whichever way you want to put it. Uh, <laughs> yes. But yeah. So, um, but yeah, a little bit off tangent. Uh, have you seen the new Mortal Kombat film yet? Yes, I have. I saw it last week. Um, Absolutely glorious. Glorious! I really enjoyed it. I'm, I'm not a fan of the games. I'm completely unfamiliar with the games myself. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, that's, that's okay. Unaware with the other two movies as well. So I was going in yeah. completely blind, more or less. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but yeah, but, but I, w- I will say this. The, the Mortal Kombat film, it is definitely the love letter that longtime fans have been needing just just the brutality of it all and just that that wonderful update to the original mortal kombat theme technical uh, techno syndrome absolutely fantastic <laughs> i can't i can't play any of it because copyright <laughs> mm. really frustrating that i have to abide by the copyright rules especially when it do, when especially when doing a series like this but nevertheless the rescuers this is an this is another one of those underrated gems from this particular era of uh, disney films yeah um i don't remember watching this one at all really as a kid i maybe watched it once or twice on tv or something mm-hmm. but this was my yeah. first time in recent years getting familiar with it uh, I will say that the the sequel, The Rescuers Down Under, that oh. holds more. Yeah, th- that that's, that's, that's more in my memory. Yeah, I say that, that's under. that's the that's the one I actually remember watching more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, th- than the than the original main because uh, because um, I'll I'll just get this right. I'll just get this out of the way, folks. The Rescuers Down Under is what a lot of fans feel the foot this one should have been. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I definitely I think I get that. Yeah. Yeah, but don't but don't worry, folks. I am going to spend the summer covering the Renaissance films, and um, that should that should all be done by the time I uh, I start college at the end of August. Which um, which does mean that I may not be able to get these episodes done as frequently as I used to. But rest assured, King of Isolation ain't going anywhere. It's just going to take a little bit longer once I get once I get up and running with college to get the. Uh, the episodes out if i if i can get like one or two episodes done a month then at least at least i'm still at least i'm still keeping it going um if you need a replacement i'm here <laughs> <laughs> yeah I've, I've always got, i've always got michael on hand to help yeah <laughs> uh, so, um and uh, just a quick heads up uh, it's june 1st right now so uh technically based on the month we are into the summer right now but uh summer doesn't really officially get underway until like somewhere along the lines of uh June 21st or something along those lines. But um, recording on June 1st, we've just had news today. Uh, as far as restrictions are concerned, uh, the area that we're in, the, the area that me and Michael live in, uh, we're, we are going to be staying in level two for the time being, mainly because of the rise in, uh, yes. mainly because of the rise in cases uh, over um, recent weeks. But um, 
I've, but don't worry for but don't worry for, as, as far as the vaccine is concerned i've got myself registered so now we just play now we just play the waiting game but anyway uh let, let's let's uh, remove, let's let's remove ourselves from uh, the, the troubles of the world and uh like i say in the intro just isolate ourselves with the magic of disney as we go through the rescuers let's just hope those crocodiles don't come and eat us if we get if we give <laughs> this film a bad score <coughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> But anyway, but anyway, let's get started. And as always, spoiler alert in place if you haven't seen the film yet, as is tradition. Must make sure I have that spoiler alert in. Otherwise, like I say, those crocodiles are probably going to be after me. <laughs> so here we go. Um, this is this is one of those ra- this is one of those rare cases as far as like uh, the start of the film is concerned, where we don't actually have that classic Disney. Uh, Jingle. Uh, is it interestingly on the on the Disney Plus version of this film? It's the uh, distributed distributed by uh, Buena Vista, mm-hmm. which is the uh, which is the company that uh, took over from distributing uh, the Disney films after the uh, Archeo Radio Pictures finished doing uh, the mm-hmm. films after uh, after Peter Pan. Peter Pan was the last film that was um, distributed by Archeo Radio Pictures. Uh, Buena Vista took over from uh, Lady in the Trap onwards. onwards. Um, but yeah, uh, like I said, this is one of those rare cases where we don't get that iconic uh, Disney uh, jingle with uh, the blue castle and uh, uh, effectively the same as the intro for this series. But but um, but, if, but if anything, I feel I feel that works in this film's favor to sort of like help uh, establish uh, a more mature tone for this. Um, uh, for this film, and then we see, uh, and then we see this, and then we see the boat, uh, which is in uh, Devil's Bayou, but we don't find out whereabouts it is until uh, oh. later on. Uh, we see, we see, a, we see a little girl Penny. Uh, she's got this. She's got a message in a bottle, and she's being watched on uh, in in the background by these two very intimidating crocodiles or alligators, depending on which one it is. I'm pretty sure it's crocodiles. I might be wrong. But I'm pretty I confident it's crocodiles. crocodiles in the film. I'm sure yeah. they say crocodiles in the film somewhere. Right, we'll go with that. Um, but yeah, uh, she she then puts the, she then throws the um, she throws the bottle into the uh, into the water. To uh, it's effectively uh, effectively one of those uh, old uh, stories of um, message in a bottle, uh, sending it out to to get help. And we have um, we have the first of uh, four songs. That are featured uh, throughout the film. I said there's all there, there is only four films on the um, uh, on the soundtrack. Uh, this one is uh, this one is called the journey, and I will say uh, throughout that whole opening scene from like uh, when we see the boat and uh, during the opening credits, especially a, a lot a lot of the backgrounds they effectively look like paintings. Yes, yes, no, that's what I was going to say. The your background currently it's a beautiful looking painting um yeah and then the opening title sequence along with the song is a series of different paintings as we see this bottle make its journey towards the what is it the rescue society or the rescue agency the rescue the, aid society yes the rescue and, aid society yeah and um yeah let's see the um I say the I say the song "The Journey" as a whole. It's uh, it's absolutely uh, uh, fantastic. But I will say, uh, at the start, it is like so just just hearing the um, uh, the strings, and it, it it does give that sort of like foreboding uh, tone. Mysterious. Yes. Mm-hmm. The, yeah. That's an, yeah. That sense of mystery that uh, what what's gonna what's gonna happen over the course of uh, uh, the film. Uh, but I will. But I will say overall, it is overall the um, the way it's animated. It is really beautiful how it is um, all done for that uh, opening scene. Yep. And then we cut to, and then once that scene, and then once those opening credits are out of the way, uh, and we actually see um, we actually see uh, Don Bluth's name as one of the uh, directing animators who mm-hmm. would uh, who would actually go on to uh, make films like uh, Secret of Nim. Uh, an American Tale and uh, The Land Before Time. Uh, the la- the latter of those three, I'll um, talk about when I cover um, Oliver and Company. Uh, but um, 
But uh, if you if you want to get caught up on uh, if you want to get caught up on the series so far, folks, you can catch you can check the Kingdom of Isolation playlist in the top right of your screens. Um, so we get so we head to the uh, United Nations in New York, and this is where this is where we get introduced to the uh, Rescue Aid Society uh, for the first time, and uh, and the song title itself, Rescue Aid Society. It's. Um... <sighs> Not, not necessarily a major criticism to me, but it's uh, it's not the most appealing as far as like listening to it is concerned. Uh, yeah. um, as I say, just just um, just just from just like like the uh, the composition of the music, uh, the lyrics I'm not the biggest fan of, and uh, and then you've got that uh, then you've got that off key mouse singing in the background, just oh, <laughs> not pleasant. Now I now. I know that sort of stuff is normally in there as sort of like uh, just just like a gag on it. <laughs> yeah, but oh boy, that's mm, not pleasant for the ears, in my opinion, anyway. I agree with you. I, I much rather prefer the the opening song, uh, mm-hmm. the first song in the film over this one. Yeah. And um, even the look of the Rescue Aid Society. Again, I'm just. It, it's, it looks a bit ugly in this film. I get it because they're mice, they're rodents, and they yeah, look this. but I much, I much rather prefer the look of the Rescue Aid Society in the sequel. Um, sort of looks yeah. like this big, huge boardroom, which is, I thought was very funny. yeah, yeah, um, uh, but yeah, uh, and then and then the 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 janitor, uh, the janitor uh, Bernard, he is. Uh, he, uh, he's he's voiced by uh, Bob Newhart. Uh, turns out he is uh, very superstitious, in particular with the number thirteen, which ends up being a running gag throughout the entire yeah. film. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> I do really like Bernard's character. He's uh, yeah, yeah. He's probably my favorite character of the entire franchise. He's the one that I relate to the most. Very superstitious. Very bumbling. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then we, um, and and then what? And then while, uh, and and then when we cut to him joining in with singing the Rescue Aid Society song, we see Bianca, voiced by uh, Eva Gabor, who has done, uh, she's done a couple of uh, Disney projects uh, previously. She was a Duchess in the oh, Aristocats, nice. in particular. So uh, and the, and uh, Bernard. Uh, uh, Bernard gets a little bit uh, distracted by, uh, by by how beautiful uh, uh, Bianca is, and then he's like, "Focus on the song," and, <laughs> and, and and then it's just it's just when Bianca comes into comes into the room, as in every everyone's just like, "Yeah," mm-hmm. I mean, in in the nicest way possible, she does know how to grab people's attention. Yes. It? In, in in the <laughs> nicest way possible, folks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the bo- the bottle gets um, the bottle gets um, wheeled retrieved. in. Retrieved. Mm-hmm. Yeah, retrieved. Yeah. Uh, Bernard r- retrieves the uh, the message that's inside the bottle uh, on a ladder that has thirteen steps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I say, th- this this becomes a running gag throughout the entire film. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, one, of the, but... one of the funniest gags in the film, I feel. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I mean, of course, it's sort of like uh, customary that uh, Disney do have like a, a running gag throughout yeah. mm-hmm. um, the sort of films, especially in this sort of, like, especially in this sort of era. Yeah. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, uh, the message gets retrieved at the expense of Bernard being like stuck at the bottom of the bottle. He does manage to get himself back out eventually. Don't worry about that. Uh, they 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 read the message, um, Morningside Orphanage. Uh, and it's and it turns out the girl that needs the help is Penny. And uh, Bianca volunteers herself to take on this assignment, and um, and and then, and with with the way Bernard's talking about how, how dangerous it could be, uh, is it that 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 it, that actually a bit a bit of role reversal? Because I mean, I mean Bianca grabbing Bernard's attention with how beautiful she is, but Bernard grabbing Bianca's attention with um, showing genuine concern for Bianca, and that's one of the reasons why. She chooses him for the assignment. Yeah, bit of, bit of an evil move on B- Bianca's 
they have, but they are, they are. I think, uh, Bernard's got to get out there someday, so. Yeah, and then, and then also, um, and, and, and of course, uh, it's, it's, du- it's during that particular point in the film as well that we, uh, that we see like the hints of uh, the, rom- the romance that would start to blossom between mm-hmm. the two over the course yeah. of this film and later the sequel. The sequel, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, um, uh, so we uh, they they decide to try and uh, I say uh, they've got like, a couple of options for like a, a route to go. Um, uh, Bernard suggests one, and then Bianca says, uh, Let, "Let's take the shortcut through the zoo," which, uh, as we'll find out shortly, uh, is not the best idea in the world, especially when you've got a grumpy lion that's just been woken up. <laughs> Especially if you're a mouse. Good thing that they didn't run into the elephant pen or something. Oh boy, <laughs> that would have been a that would have been uh, even Another more Dumbo concerning situation. Ah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, Ima- imagine if one of the elephants was that. Ma- imagine if one of imagine if the elephant was the matriarch. Oh, uh, just <laughs> moving swiftly on, folks. <laughs> Moving swiftly on. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, the um, I say they decide to go the original route. They get to the uh, the Morningside orphanage, and uh, they they end up bumping into the um, they end up bumping bumping into the uh, uh, the cat that's next to the box that has uh, Penny's belongings in it. Um, it is Ruf. His name is Rufus, and he is voiced by. Uh, John uh, McIntyre. Uh, now, uh, yeah, so he's got a v- he's got a fairly substantial uh, film resume to his name. He uh, he would go on to be part of the uh, next Disney film, The Fox and the Hound, as uh, Mister Digger. Uh, but uh, one of his most prolific roles, from what I've got in front of me, is. Uh, so Sheriff Al Chambers in Alfred Hitchcock's classic Psycho, but he? Uh, yeah, he yeah he was uh, he was in uh, he was in Psycho. Uh, he's uh, his final film role was uh, in Turner and Hooch. Uh, he was also in the Incredible Hulk film as well as Agent Preston DeKalb. All right, what the, the old the old. Incredible Hulk. Yeah, the uh, yeah the Incredible yeah. Hulk TV series, the one that's got mm-hmm. uh, Lou Ferrigno in it. Lou Ferrigno, I. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, uh, um, but yeah, um, so yeah, uh, he, yeah, um, he he then he then t- he then tells a he then tells us a story about uh, about um, Penny being uh, in the orphanage, and then and then we get then we get this flashback scene, and wow. It's it's very re- it's very rare that this happens. It's very rare that this happens for me. But dare I say, given the right circumstances, if a scene like this comes along, yeah, just just be prepared for waterworks. The start the start of that scene is really really tough to watch because Penny's saying she's not pretty enough to be uh, chosen by by somebody to be. Um, uh, to be adopted, but but Rufus giving her that little ray of hope that she needs to uh, keep going. Yeah, it is a very, it is one of the darker Disney films to an extent. Um, yeah, no way near as it is, it is a real yeah. child at this time. It's no yeah allegorical. It's not like a kitten this time. It's it's an yeah. actual child that's yeah in danger. Yeah, um, but. As, as, as far as darkness is concerned, it's no way near as dark as they were as Disney were going to get with a black cauldron, which I'm yes. going to which I'm <laughs> going to cover in a couple of episodes time. Don't worry about that, folks. Uh, I've, I've I've said it bef- I've said it before. Um, the, the the black cauldron is probably the closest Disney are ever going to get to actually making effectively a horror movie. Horror film. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh boy, that's going to be that's going to be very interesting to cover when uh, when that episode goes live. <laughs> But back to the rescuers, um, Rufus gives Bian- uh, Bernard and Bianca they, uh, the information that they need to, they, they go to this, uh, they end up going to this pawn shop, uh, Medusa's pawn shop to be specific. And uh, oh boy, yeah, the introduction right out the gate is very, 
unsettling. Not necessarily from the visual point of view, but just the music alone, it makes it very unsettling. You're just like, yeah, this is not going to end well. Yeah. Yeah. And this is where we get introduced to uh, effectively, um, and this is exactly how, this is how I've put it in my notes, Corella 2.0, <laughs> Madam Medusa. Yes. Long story short, she is an absolute psycho. Don't believe me? Wait till later to find out why. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, boy. But, um, yeah. Uh, anyway, Madam Medusa, voiced by Geraldine uh, Page. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, I'm not sure if she's been in any Disney films uh, previously, but... Um, but yeah, uh, oh boy, Woo -wee. yeah, I was like just um, yeah, you you can just tell she's effectively Corella Deville two point oh, yeah. just just for, uh, just just be just really talking down to uh, Mister uh, Snoops, I think it is, yeah. um, Mister Snoops, yes, it is Mister Snoops, yeah, voiced by uh, Joe Flynn. Just get, I'll just get that out of the way. Just now. Uh, yeah, oh boy, yeah, she uh, she. Let's just say, uh, it, uh, I've, I've, I've said it before, uh, you know what? Add her to the list of irredeemable Disney. Add her to the list of irredeemable Disney characters from introduction. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. Even yeah. Cruella has a, a, a tint of humanity about her, but I, I don't know that for sure. It might have been yeah, that, that, I've the, recently watched Cruella. The, the um, Cruella remake. Uh, yeah. And uh, I, I, I am, I am going to get round to watching the Cruella remake uh later this week folks mm -hmm. so uh i am i'm i am gonna get around to that um uh but yeah um so uh, but anyway uh no doubt you're gonna be no doubt you're gonna be doing your like uh initial thoughts on the um, corral one year movies and milk channel at some point um no i didn't with this one um i didn't oh. with corella just because it has been out in other countries for like a, a wee bit. Oh, it's, yeah, it's out in the US now. There's yeah. I'm prioritizing it, in films that are out in the UK first, just so I can ah. get a little bit of. Yeah, and oh yeah, yeah. To to appease the YouTube algorithm overlords, which I yes. really hate. Why can't they just <laughs> let us make what we want? I don't know. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. That's it. Uh, but yeah. Uh, uh, they get they get uh, Bernard and Bianca find out about the uh, the devil. Uh, the Devil's Bayou, and I can only assume, based on the fact that it's a bayou, I can only assume it's somewhere in New Orleans. Yes, uh, well, I, I, we'll say that, yeah. Um, you're just saying that because of Princess and the Frog, pretty much? Most likely, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because I mean, I mean, I mean, bayous do tend to normally be associated associated mm -hmm. with uh, uh, with New Orleans anyway. But uh, oh right, okay. Uh, well, so from my perspective, anyway. Uh, but yeah, uh, the um, so, uh, I'll say just I'll say just 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 the start of um, I'll say I'll say the way she's talking down to Mister Snoops uh, uh, over the phone. Oh boy! Uh, but then, but then we see that then we see that psycho side, the psycho side of her red start to ramp up. I mean, flipping heck! Could you be more aggressive on the road? Yeah, <laughs> similar to Corella again. Just yeah, yeah. There's yeah, exa exactly. Like, like I was saying, horrible driver. Like, there, there was there was a it's like just, there was a lot of there's a lot of similarities between Corella Deville. And uh, Madame Medusa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Um, Bernard and Bianca, they, um, they're, they, they're in the, they were in the, uh, the case that uh, Medusa had packed. But then that case goes flying out of a car. And, uh, they, and they're just like, oh, great. Now what? <laughs> they do manage to get to uh, some sort of airport. Uh, well, it, it turns out it's actually a helipad because you see this uh, this giant, what looks like to be a, a medical helicopter, um, yeah. uh, going to land. Uh, right. Alb Albatross Airways or Albatross Airlines, whichever way you want to put it. Uh, oh boy, <laughs> yeah, Albatross Air Flight Thirteen. 
They, 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 they're not su- they are not subtle with that uh, superstitious running gag. They are not subtle about it at all. I, I did I did laugh quite hard when it was revealed that it was Flight 13. Um, yeah. So, and uh, even even Berners like uh, maybe we should have taken the train. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but but it's Jim Jordan that voices uh, Orville the the albatross, and um, and with with how clumsily he lands, yes, uh, and yes, Disney did do their research on the, on that sort of thing, uh, with how clumsy the albatrosses are with uh, like taking off mm-hmm. or landing. So yeah, they did do their research on that front to make it as to make the um, the movement of uh, Orville as realistic as possible. I say Orville voiced by uh, Jim Jordan, uh, who was going to be one of the, um, I say he was going to be uh, reprising his role as Orville in uh, the sequel, but uh, uh, but he ended up passing away bit, uh, beforehand. Uh, so they um, so they ended up getting John Candy to do uh, Orville's brother, Wilbur. Yes. yes. Wilbur and Orville, the Wright brothers. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that, I mean, that, I mean that pretty that that pretty much speaks for itself. I mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, but anyway, um, yeah, they. Uh, but anyway, Bianca, they get onto they get onto the uh, they get onto Orville. Uh, goes he goes for the um he he goes for, he goes for the takeoff. Uh, and yeah, uh, so much for being fit as a fiddle, yes. as uh, Orville claimed. Um, the, uh, and of course, he um, and of course, an- another thing that Disney did do uh, some uh, accurate research on is the fact that Orville says before they take off, uh, no smoking on the flight. D- uh, this is round about the point when uh, airlines across the world did start to ban in flight smoking because, the- because there were one or two incidents. Uh, previously, that um, that because of um, because uh, because of incidents involve, involving in-flight smoking that caused some um, uh, some aviation uh, accidents, um, they um, uh, th- that that was the point that they started to ban um, in-flight smoking before it was banned altogether um, uh, towards like uh, the, be- the beginning of uh, the beginning of the millennium. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and then, and then, and then, all, and then uh, Bernard criticizes Orville for running a red light in the air. <laughs> there are no red lights <laughs> in the air. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I do really like this sequence. Yeah, yeah, but uh, this but whole sequence with Orville. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. It is. Uh, it is Sorry. pretty hilarious. <laughs> so the, the, the 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 music at this point uh, as well is uh, it, it definitely. It, it definitely definitely heightens that particular moment. But uh, uh, during the during one of the original VHS releases, there was a little bit of oh, a, there was a little bit of controversy because there was one particular frame in this in the film on its original release, the original VHS release. That uh, yeah, let's just say there was some nudity, and I'm not going to show the frame because the last thing I want is for this to end up being age restricted. But uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, just just search re- uh, just rescuers nudity. Just search for that. Kids, don't do that. Let mommy and daddy take care of that for you. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, yeah, that's, no, it's, um... that's it. Yeah, uh, you, you'll you'll understand you'll understand why when you when you see the frame. They did manage to get that frame edited out in future releases since then. But uh, yeah, it's not the first time Disney landed themselves in hot water for uh, uh, for something for for something like this. Not the first, and definitely not the last. But uh, dirty boys back in the day. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, um, and this is the point where we get the third song in uh, in the film, uh, which is uh, "Tomorrow Is Another Day." And out of out of the four songs that are featured in this film, this one is probably this is this one's probably my favorite. With I say I say I say uh, top three taking Rescue Aid Society out of the equation that that doesn't even get that doesn't even come close to the podium in my opinion. Um, I so said top three. Mm-hmm. Uh, tomorrow is another day. The journey and uh, 
someone's waiting for you, uh, which we'll get into, uh, which we'll get into shortly. So those those are the top three. Um, I'm not not sure how not sure how to rank them uh, at the moment, but um, let's say it let say it is it it does it is really uh, tomorrow's another day. It is a really relaxing song to like help um, uh, to help um, ease uh, Bernard de Bianca into their journey to the uh, the Devil's Bayou. Mm-hmm. The whole soundtrack is very calm and very, very laid back in regards to Disney soundtracks. It's yeah. not really any big musical numbers. It's very, mm-hmm. very melodramatic. Yeah. Uh, then we, um, let's say, then we reach uh, the de- then we reach the Devil's Bayou, and uh, it it it's some it's something I have it's something I've criticized Disney for previously, and I'm going to criticize them for it again. The recycled animation. It, I say they were notorious for doing it during this particular era. The most infamous example yeah. is, of course, the phony King of England sequence in Robin Hood, which I've covered in a, a previous episode uh, with Jack. I finally got Jack on the show. Yes. I finally got him for Robin Hood. Uh, so, <laughs> because, uh, he, he was he was a bit it um, was a bit um, it was a bit frustrated that he couldn't uh, cover the Black Cauldron um, with me, but uh, he has specifically requested me to have him on board to do Atlantis, the Lost Empire, and uh, Treasure Planet. Oh, Jack, the, the, the dirty rotten scoundrel. I was hoping to do Treasure Planet. Hmm. Sake. I guess I'll do Chicken Little then. Oh, oh no, no, no. I, 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 <laughs> I, I, I'm I, dreading that one. I'm dreading that one. Although in saying that, now you mention it, I might be able to... Pull one or two strings regarding that. See if Jack would be willing to have you on board for the episode as well. So yeah, uh, because 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 Michael's got uh, a um, a pro account here on um, on Zoom. I I think it's a pro account. Anyway, I might be wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, -hmm. Yeah. Uh, meaning um, uh, meaning he's meaning he'll be able. Meaning, uh, he'll be able to. Meaning, with uh, with him uh, on the uh, the Zoom call, uh, we won't have to worry about the meeting, uh, the call lasting um, uh, anything less than uh, forty minutes. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, especially with how long some of the episodes that I've done previously. So, I say there was one particular. I say one or two episodes I recorded to have have uh, surpassed the two hour mark because of how because of how much we, we covered during those particular. Um, Episodes, so yeah, like I, said, I, I might, I might be able to pull one or two strings and see if uh, Jack would be willing to have you on board for Treasure Planet. I mean, Treasure Planet criminally underrated, and the only reason it didn't do as well as it did, um, because of what it was re- up against at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've, I've, I've actually, I actually mentioned it when I when I covered uh, Robin Hood previously. Um, the films it was up against at the time: Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, Lord of the Rings: The Two Towers, and Martin Scorsese's Gangs of New York. If I was Disney, I would be bricking myself at that point as well. Well, you got to think of the children, eh? Yeah, children the... aren't going to want to watch any of those. But yeah, well, I say, I mean, I mean, uh, the, the the Harry Potter books they'd already been very successful that. at this mm-hmm. point, and uh, the first the first Harry Potter film had just come out the year previously, so mm-hmm. kids would have been more inclined to go for Harry yeah, Potter right. than uh, than Treasure Planet. I mean. Dare I say I wouldn't have seen the harm in pushing the um, pushing the release date back to something like uh, like February of of uh, two thousand February two thousand three because the because it came out uh, November two thousand two roughly. Um, I say I say around about February March two thousand three when it was sort of like half term uh, yeah. at, at the time. So I mean that that could that could have been a, a better opportunity for them to. Uh, Get the get the uh, the bucks in uh, then, but uh, well, hey ho! But um, as it, it is, as I mean, Treasure Planet. It it's one of those films. Yes, it's yes, it's hand drawn, but it still looks amazing. Nearly twenty years on, yes. it looks absolutely. I say, it's one of those rare cases of one of the more modern animated Disney films still holding up today, just because yeah. of how amazing it looks. Um, 
but yeah, uh, but back to rescuers. Uh, where about where we we got we've we've got to Devil's Bayou, and uh, yeah, Madame Medusa uh, says light up the flares. Uh, flares. <laughs> she does realize they are fireworks, which yeah. are completely different to flares. Yeah. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, and she's like, she's a Disney villain. She's the, she, she's not the smartest. You do t- you do tend to you do tend to find that with their Disney villains and their uh, bumbling sidekicks as well. Looking mm-hmm. at you, Jasper and Horace. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh boy, but uh, yeah, it's um. I say, but anyway, back, but anyway, back to the uh, recycled animation um, because the because the way that uh, Penny's going through uh, the swamp to try and escape from uh, Madame Medusa, that's the same animation that's used in, uh, in, in in the Jungle Book when you've got um, when you've got Mowgli with like effectively the same animation. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. You you probably edit the the two things in, but yeah, uh, yeah, and then um, but uh, but but I will say I didn't actually use any footage from the Jungle Book apart from like one frame showing like the the title of the film because because uh, I, I had because I, I had to I had to get the I had to get the episode recorded in like within an hour, mm-hmm. um, so so I did I I didn't realistically have any time to get the uh, um uh, the clips from the film. In, mm-hmm. but but I but I will but I, I I will I will show like um I will show the clip that uh, I will show the clip in question regarding the recycled animation and then uh, and and then and then you'll see why that I say like I say it it's, it's it seems to be a recurring thing with me criticizing Disney for like recycling the animation I mean I mean they are getting I mean they are getting bigger budgets for these films and yet they yeah. and yet they're still resorting to recycling animation. It would have been understandable if they'd done this back in the war days, but I don't know why it was in the fifties they suddenly got a bit lazier. Yeah. yeah. But um but event but eventually they um eventually uh Brutus and Nero, that's the name of the crocodiles, they managed to get um they might they managed to find Penny, bring her back to the boat, and uh Oh boy! It's like, and, and and Penny's just like, do not get, do not get my teddy bear wet. <laughs> She's like Mister Bean in that regard. She, she cares too much for her teddy. <laughs> oh my! I, I I never actually picked. I never even picked up on that. <laughs> I never even picked it's up. It's a on little that. similarity that they both share. There's yeah. there's nothing else that they both share. Um, yeah. But I was like, I, was like I, 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 I never even, I never even picked up on that until, until you, ju- until you just brought it up there. But uh, yeah. oh boy! But um, uh, the biggest thing that Madame Medusa is obsessed with is finding this diamond, the Devil's Eye, and she's been using Penny to try and find it for what, what seems like a while now. But uh, they, um, they end up. Um, so they're still they're still trying to work out where it is because see that they still they still don't know where it is. But at the end of the day, um, she's brought back and she's um, the sass that she delivers <laughs> on Mister Snoops as well. The yeah. sass, oh my word, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, she's a nasty piece uh, of work. Yeah, and uh, oh boy, and. Uh, where about uh, where about am I in my notes? Uh, he, he, uh, I'm, pr- I'm pretty sure it's Snoops that says it. I might be wrong on that one, but he, but he, he said uh, he says great balls of fire. And uh, in my notes, cue Jerry Lewis again. Can't play because copyright. Mm. Bloody copyright. <sighs> yeah, I say, even if it's just like even if it's just like a three second clip. It could still get claimed for copyright, which is yeah. No, you need to be very careful. Yeah, but uh, but yeah. Oh boy, yeah, she yeah. And then we and then we reach the point where Medusa becomes full blown irredeemable psycho. 
as they just mm-hmm. like I say, just the obsession to get that devil's eye and to uh, get uh, and and uh, tr- trying to and trying to play all nicey nice with uh, uh, with Penny. I think just I mean, she's just, just I mean, just gee whiz, lady, calm down <laughs> for once. Oh. Yeah, I uh, see so the um. Well, so, and then she says like something along the lines of like um forcing forcing them to uh, uh forcing Penny to like. I mean, I'm just like, why would anyone want to like you, Medusa? Have you seen how you treat others? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, oh boy, uh, and then and then I was like, just just f- a full blown rampage with a shotgun. Yes. Oh, and and then that's where we um, that's where we uh, and then she's just and then she gets to a point where she's like, wait, I got what is wrong with this thing, and uh, this all like ties ties two into one from uh, on my end on the notes effectively, uh, and I'm just like, uh, probably because you're out of bullets. Oh no, you forgot to hit reload. <laughs> oh boy. So yeah, number one rule of getting a gun. Always make sure to reload. But um, and then, uh, and, and and this is all. This is all while we have um, Brutus and Nero trying to ca- trying to catch Bernard and Bianca using the organ. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> I was like again. Effectively <laughs> bumbling sidekicks. They try as they might, they just cannot catch them. No, uh, it, 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 it does harken back to those uh, days of the uh, original days of uh, OG Tom and Jerry cartoons, mm-hmm. where because because I'm pu- I'm pretty sure there was uh, a particular I'm pretty sure there was like one or two episodes where a similar gag was used using like an organ or a, a piano um, yeah. for Tom to try and uh, catch Jerry, but. Um, yeah, and then this this is where the this is where the waterworks started. This is where the waterworks proper started mm-hmm. for me, folks. So uh, yeah, you might want to get the tissues ready for this. This was this next scene was it. It is a tough watch. It is a very tough watch. Just from is it just. The song "Someone's Waiting for You." Mm-hmm. It's let's say the lyrics, the music composition, the visuals. Like I say, it, it, it's a tough watch, and it's. And I, and this is this is this is another thing that I have actually put into my notes. Penny, it, it's the first time that I've actually seen. Was it? I say it's like it's like the first genuine time from all the films that I've covered so far that we see a genuinely innocent character. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was she, she, I was Penny is just so innocent, not just throughout this film, but especially through this song. And yeah. I say it, I say, like I say, it is a, it is a very tough watch. I, I even in, end up shedding a couple of tears while watching that scene earlier, um, earlier today, mm-hmm. which which works, which very, very much works in the song's favor to help drive home the uh, the emotional uh, the emotional impact that they they wanted to have for the song. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and again, I think it is amplified with the fact that she is a human child. Uh, yeah. Yes, a lot of well, I don't want to say a lot of children, but some children can relate to being in a similar scenario. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, and then we have, uh, and then we also have the uh, the last of the uh, uh, the side uh, characters. We've got the um, you've got mm-hmm. um, you t- you've got two muskrats uh, voiced by uh, Jeanette Nolan and Pat uh, Buttram, uh, Ellie May, and Luke. Now, Pat Buttram has, I, I, I know he's done. He has done uh, Disney films 
uh, previously, he was Napoleon in the Aristocats. He was Robin Hood, uh, no, Sheriff of Nottingham in Robin Hood, and he voices the chief in uh, The Fox and the Hound. And uh, I, I mentioned it when covering the uh, uh, the Robin Hood episode. Uh, he was one of the tune bull. He was one of the tune bullets in uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Yeah. Uh, he's one of the uh, he's one of the uh, saloon patrons in uh, Back to the Future Three, and he also um, he also voices uh, a the Possum Park MC in a Goofy movie. Didn't you know that one? That, I need to be watching Goofy movie, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I just need to, I'm pretty sure I've got that in the effectively director. Yes, I do have a goofy movie in the director videos. Uh, I do have that in the director videos portion of my um, uh, the list Jeez. of films I'm going to be um, covering. Uh, let's just say I've got about, uh, including the ones that I've covered already, I've got about a hundred films uh, for this um, uh, for this series. And that's including the animated films, director video sequels. Uh, what else is there? Uh, the Pixar films and the live action remakes. I will cover live action. I will cover the uh, live action films as well. The uh, like the aren't like live action remakes. Films like uh, films like uh, uh, there's a couple of examples. Uh, Old Yella, a couple a couple of hybrids. Mary Poppins, Pete's Dragon, Bed Knobs and Broomsticks. Uh, Homeward Bound. I say those. I say I, say, I I will get round to covering the um, the live action. I will get round to covering the proper live action films that aren't live action remakes. Mm -hmm. Um, I I, I, will, I will cover those as and when. Um, I mean, yeah. yeah I say I mean I mean for, I mean for all I know, people might end up requesting uh, some of those live action films to be covered, and it'll be a case of. Okay, let's see. Let's see what I can get on board to cover this episode with, and then get the um, see who I can get as my guest. Uh, watch the film, do the episode, and then take it from there. Right now, slot me in for George of the Jungle. <laughs> I will be sure to. Uh, right, let's see. Live action, separate list. Well, is George of the Jungle could be classed as a live action remake. It's a live action remake, but not of a Disney property. But eh. could work it in. It's a, it's a, yeah, because it's because it's sort of like a, a comedy parody of Tarzan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, based yeah, on the, I, I, yeah, based on a cartoon. Yeah, I, I, I get, I get where you're coming from on there on that one. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, that's it. I have, yeah, I've, I've got that in. I've got that in, ready to go. <laughs> Good stuff. Happy days. So, uh, but yeah, um, I was like, I said, those are the, the those are like some of the side characters. We've got we've got James McDonald, uh, who voices uh, Evan Root, who's a dragonfly. Uh, the name Evan Root it comes it's named after a brand of outboard motors, which, which makes sense. yeah works perfectly in the character's uh, uh, favor. You've got um, you've got a uh, George Lindsay uh, as Dead Eye, uh, who's a Fisher Rabbit, one of the one of the friends of Luke and uh, Ellie May. You've got uh, you've got a grumpy old uh, you've got a grumpy turtle Gramps, voiced by Larry Larry Clements, who is one of uh, Disney's nine old men. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Dub Taylor as Digger, who's a mole. And you've got John Fiedler, who voices Piglet in, who voiced Piglet in the, um, who's voiced Piglet throughout the, uh, the Winnie the Pooh franchise as the Deacon Owl. Didn't even recognize him. Yeah. I say, well, um, but yeah, I say, I say, th those are like, those are the rest of the side characters that we get introduced to. And this is like, uh, like right at the start of the uh, second half of uh, the film. Mm -hmm. Um. So, so at this point, we're probably like about th halfway through the second act of um, the film, and I'm going by classic three act structure, folks. Um, so yeah, uh, we reach a point where uh, Bernard and Bianca they see, let's see, let's see uh, the part the, the part that brings in the fact that uh, 
uh, Penny is just one of the most innocent um, Disney characters out there. Is the fact that she's like praying for praying for everybody at uh, Morningside um, orphanage, and I was like, as it, I said that that. And, and that wasn't and that wasn't too long after the waterworks started uh during the someone's waiting for you uh sequence uh but it'll be anchor they do um uh, they do speak to penny for the first time uh and they they say that yeah we're we're coming here to to help you with uh getting out of here and and you just she, and penny is just elated over this and then madame medusa calls her down uh, low tide, perfect opportunity to get the um, uh, the devil's eye. Uh, but yeah, this is the point where she's effectively trying to. Well, for, from my perspective, anyway, she's trying to kill Penny. She's yeah. like, yeah, do not, yeah, we are not bringing her back up until she finds it this time. Yeah, and just like, eh, yeah. geez, you're trying to kill her or what? This is a very tense sequence. Uh, I yeah, I enjoyed it. Um, yeah, I was saying, I was saying, and just and just like that, that just that music sting of when mm -hmm. we see the devil's eye for the first time. Yeah, I mean, uh, but yeah, uh, you, you, we also see, we also see a uh, we also see uh, the skeleton of a pirate. Yeah, this yeah, gee Disney, thanks for the nightmare fuel. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> very good at uh, creating nightmare fuel surrounding yeah. pipe. Yeah, and the the mu the music wasn't the music wasn't helping at this point either. No, no. But, and then it doesn't help the fact that it ends up being like a a Mario level with the the water slowly rising as well, just amping up the tension. It's like, you know. it, if 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 anything, I think it would make more sense for it to be a Sonic level. Yes, uh, one of them. Sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I mean, Mario, he's more than capable of swimming, th uh, swimming through the water without yeah. much difficulty. But yeah, oh uh, boy, <laughs> that 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 that, uh, that drowning music from Sonic. Oh boy, could very well be incorporated into this scene. <laughs> yeah, It'll still have the same effect. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy, but yeah, um, see, because because that because that blowhole. That, that has the water coming through. That, that that's the point where you just like, yeah, this is not going to end well. Uh, but uh, they managed to they managed to find the devil's eye. They managed to get it out of the uh, the skull. Uh, they managed to get they managed to get back out. And and Madame Medusa, she's just like, yes, mine, 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 without any regard to yeah. But of course, being a Disney villain. That's to be expected. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! <laughs> yeah. uh, the next, uh, and then we, and then we reach the climax of uh, the film. Uh, uh, th th those side characters we got introduced to, they come to help. Um, <clears throat> they, they come to help uh, with uh, Bernard and Bianca to. Um, effectively, uh, defeat, yeah, yeah. Uh, defeat Medusa and uh, uh, Medusa, Snoops, uh, Brutus, and uh, Nero. Oh boy, <laughs> yeah, this is, um, uh, I say, uh, uh, this was this isn't this isn't the first time that this would happen, and it uh, d it definitely won't be the last that we have the side characters. Helping with uh, defeating uh, the village, it's it's the it's that uh, it's that comedic fight before the big climax, mm -hmm. which would yeah. be very which would be very prominent during the Renaissance period, especially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and don't worry, folks, I'm not far off getting to that point. I've only got a couple of episodes left to record after this. There we go. So yeah, you will get your Renaissance films during the summer, folks. Don't you worry about that. So, and uh, quick heads up, I wouldn't be too surprised if we have uh, a majority of, if not all of them, hitting scores that are above 100%. Yep. Could Most we likely, end yeah. yeah, could we end up seeing one or two reaching that elusive 110%? 
I imagine there's a couple in there. Yeah. And we'll get, and like I said, don't worry, I will get to those. Uh, I will get to those um, uh, in, in, in due course. Yeah. Uh, ideally in the next couple of weeks, because I'm just going to be focusing on getting these episodes uh, edited and then uploaded. I've already got the, um, I've already got the first two of, uh, of that batch sorted. Uh, I've got the Jungle Book up and I've got the, uh, the Aristocats up um, as well. So I've, I've got those up. Um, so yeah. Um, right, where about something? Uh, bear with me, folks. It's more than likely the heat that's getting to me. Oh, yes. It has been very warm over the last couple of days, folks. So there is that. Uh, yeah. Uh, we we ended up hitting the we ended up hitting the twenties as far as the temperature was concerned today, and it's uh, and it's looking more than likely we're going to end up with a heat wave over the next couple of weeks. Good, we've, we've been waiting for it. Yeah. Than ever. So 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 uh, so yeah so yeah, dare I say I wouldn't be too surprised if uh, a, a lot of my uh, a lot of the uh, a lot of my female friends in my um, my support uh, my support network uh, decide that uh, you know what let's um, you know what let's go out the back. Let's go out. Let's go out the back uh, and let's get let's get that suntan on. Oh yes. I say, I say, some of them have actually done it over the last couple of days. Anyway, some of them even have some of them even have hot tubs in their houses, which I'm a little jealous about. For the hot tubs of for the hot tubs, obviously not from. <laughs> and we'll leave it at that. Pretty yes. sure. Pre pretty <laughs> sure. The, pretty sure the older. Pretty, pretty sure a lot of. I'm pretty sure the 18 plus so will be able to fill in the blanks on the uh, the rest of that. But anyway, the uh, rest yes, <laughs> yeah, well, uh, the um, this this swamp mobile, goodness me, it is ridiculously unreliable for Madame yeah. Medusa, but it works perfectly fine for um, yeah. uh, for Penny. Um. Uh, and then it's just like the Cruella de Vil color on the on the water. Yeah, it does. Yeah, um, I think the I think the, the, probably the most hilarious part of this uh, this climax is the fact that she ends up uh, Medusa ends up using Brutus and Nero as effectively water skis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, but this is probably one of the best forms of comeuppance without actually killing the villain off. Yes. Yeah. Refreshing again. Not yeah. killing the villain. Def def definitely refreshing. Um, the, uh, say, cause of the Disney villains that they've killed, uh, Disney have killed previously, uh, the Evil Queen in Snow White, uh, Maleficent in Sleeping Beauty, uh, I don't think they've um, who else? The the horn, the the big devil in a uh, Fantasia, to an extent. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. To an extent, Chernobog. Yeah, Chernobog from uh, Night on Bald Mountain. The, the, yeah, there is that. Yeah, the, the church, the church bells before the Ave Maria sequence. Mm -hmm. Uh, what else? Uh, what? Other? Actually, um, no. I, I don't think there were that many Disney villain deaths. Not, not, they, a, not. They, they definitely came about during the Renaissance. Uh, I, was, I, was, I was about to say, not, not at this particular point in uh, Disney's yeah. history. Anyway, uh, mm -hmm. Rattigan in Great Mouse mm -hmm. Detective, Haunt King in the Black Cauldron, Sykes and Oliver and Company. So, so yeah, you've probably only got like half a dozen, if that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's before, and that's before the Renaissance films, where you've got where you had where you had. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, in chronological order, Ursula. Uh, the guy from the second rescuers. Uh McLeach, yeah. McLeach. McLeach. Gaston. Uh, Jafar technically Jafar technically oh. not killed until the return of Jafar from Aladdin. Mm -hmm. Uh Scar. Um Ratcliffe, Pocahontas. He was uh, he was just like shipped back off to England. Mm -hmm. Rollo from Hunchback of Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. Hades. He's 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 already he's already dead, so that doesn't yeah. count. <laughs> Shan Yu, Mul uh, Mulan, and Clayton in uh, Tarzan. They ended up on a high with Clayton's death, Christ. <laughs> Quite literally, in fact. <laughs> uh, yes. 
quite literally. Yeah, can you just have that villain fall like the rest of them? He had to fall and subsequently get hung in the process. (laughs) Yeah, and all you see is the shadow of his corpse. Very haunting. Yeah, that's all you see. The shadow of the corpse when the lightning strikes. That's all you see. (laughs) Yeah, but yeah. Um, yeah, I say, no, say, Brutus and Nero. They end up turning on Medusa. And I'm just yes. I'm just like, this has got to be one of the best forms of comeuppance that I've ever yeah. seen. Um, so lots of hyenas and scar and uh, the Lion King. Yeah, I was I was actually tempted to put in my notes at this point what goes around comes around. <laughs> but uh, but I'll probably keep that for the I'll keep that one for the Lion King. Yeah. But yeah, um, uh, Circle of life. Yep. Back, to, <laughs> but back in New York City, um, uh, the news report comes. At, uh, this, uh, a news report is on is uh, is on TV about how Penny find uh, Penny finding the devil's eye, and it's been given to the Smithsonian Institution, which is actually which is a, which is actually a legitimate um, mm-hmm. museum. It is it is a legitimate museum museum. Uh, founded in 1846, and it's actually it's actually located in central Washington. Uh, is it, is that, it's actually got it's actually got several locations. Actually, there's one in Washington D.C. There's one in Chantilly in Virginia, and then of course you've got one in New York City. So based on that, it will be the Smithsonian in New York City. Mm-hmm. Which, which is probably, which is probably, I say, the Smithsonian Museum. That's probably, that's probably where the, uh, that's where, I, th- I think it's Fox, Night of the Museum. Yes, mm-hmm. Night of yeah. the Museum too, is where they they go to the Smithsonian yeah. in Washington D.C. Yeah, and there we like, go, folks. There we go. I say, I say, uh, but yeah, uh, and then, and then you get, you get, su- you get such, we get such a beautiful happy ending for penny she's yeah. she gets a, she gets adopted and she and she actually get she actually gets to thank bernard and bianca uh in in that news report and it is it is such yeah. such a sweet moment and and um and not too long after that the um uh the chairman of the uh rescue aid society voiced by bernard fox I've, I, I should have brought that one up Earlier, has he been in Disney films uh, previously? He has been in. He has been in uh, a couple of significant uh, TV shows. He was uh, Doctor Bombay in Bewitched, like the original the sixties TV series. Uh, He was Max in one of the Herbie films. Herbie goes to Monte Carlo, and uh, yeah, he was he was Archibald Gracie the Fourth. In Titanic, was he? Yep, he was in Titanic. I need to rewatch all these great movies again: Psycho, Titanic, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, just so I can <laughs> see yeah. these. Four. Yeah, that's it. Which, which actually got me thinking. I wouldn't be too surprised. I, I don't think it. I don't think it's on uh, Disney Plus yet. Uh, but I'm pretty sure Titanic will get added at some point, since that was yeah, uh, over, over here anyway. I think because. It was it was a collaboration between 20th Century Fox and I think Paramount Pictures distributing the film. Was well, it? I didn't know Paramount Pictures had anything to do with it. Me need to double. Fox. Me need to double check that one. Uh, so yeah, bear with me, folks. I say, again, I say this is like, this is this is definitely the heat that gets me. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was uh, a collaboration between Paramount Pictures and Twentieth Century Fox. I don't know that. Learn something new every day. Yeah, I say, I say, it's not very often we actually get to see like two big movie studios actually coming together to yeah. help distribute the the film. I say, uh, in in a similar way that you had Chicken Run being distributed by uh, Pate. Or, or Path Eight, um, Parath- how, however, however it's Path pronounced, <laughs> and uh, DreamWorks Pictures for uh, mm-hmm. uh, for Chicken Run. But um, it, it was it was Path Eight Pictures here in the UK, and it was DreamWorks uh, mm-hmm. elsewhere in the world. 
But yeah. Uh, but yeah, the um, I say, uh, I say the, the last of my notes here. I'm just like, oh come on, January thirteenth <laughs> on a Friday. I, was, I, I, I can only assume it would have been a Friday. Most likely, yes. Yeah, I say, I say, I say, but it's still, it's still January thirteenth. I said we're just going with, um. Uh, actually, I'm actually going to double check this just now, just because, so <laughs> because um, I don't think it would have been. Ah, okay. So January thirteenth, nineteen seventy-seven was actually a Thursday. Oh, they missed out. <laughs> Technically, no. On no? a technicality, no, they haven't. All right. 1978, January the 13th to Friday. All right. Okay. So they're trying to, they're predicting the future. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But yeah. But yeah. I was was like, I was like, I was like, I said, but the fact that, I said, but the fact that it's January 13th, I was like, Friday the 13th, 1978, they get called, uh, Bernard and Bianchi get called for another assignment and they get Orville. Uh, to help with uh, doing the flight uh, again. Uh, but yeah, with how strong the wind is, yeah, good luck with that. Um, <laughs> he ends up falling backwards, but uh, that dragon flight, he manages to help Orville get uh, established level flight. And um, and, uh, and, they, and they fly off into, uh, fr- from the, they fly off from the snow into the, uh, into this, into, into that beautiful, Orange, yeah. uh, I, I can, I can, oh, yeah, sunrise. We'll, 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 either or we'll, we'll, we'll go with we'll go with sunset, we'll go with sunset. That's the best way to end the film is with a sunset, yeah, unless you're the Resident Evil games and it's and it ends with with uh, going into the sunrise, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and yes, I am planning on uh, playing uh, the new Resident Evil game at some point. I'm just, I just need to wait. I just need to wait for, I just need to wait for my copy to come through from uh, um, uh, Boomerang Rentals. So it's, a, it's a service I've been using for the like last four years now, and I've saved somewhere in the region of like close to four thousand pounds on games alone. Fantastic. And that, and that, yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I, I was like, if if I get if I get a big enough following, I'm pretty sure that I'm pretty sure that could happen one day. But I said I honestly couldn't be thankful for this sort of service because mm-hmm. without that sort of service, I wouldn't have been able to play games like God of War, Spider Man, Horizon <laughs> Zero Dawn. I wouldn't have been able to cover those great games when they came out. Yeah. Very crazy. Yeah. I think especially with especially with uh, especially with how expensive the games are uh, now with now that we're into the Series X and uh, PS5 generation. Yeah. So anyway, there we go. That is it. That is the end of uh, the rest of us. So like I say, it, like I said uh, at the start, it is a it is a very un, it's a very underrated film, but it's uh, it is definitely it is definitely a good watch as long as you don't mind the waterworks flowing during the uh, two or three moments that I mentioned earlier. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So now, uh, as a tradition, when it is uh, Michael being my guest, uh, we both have our scores. So what it's more than, so what's more than likely going to happen is going to be a case. Uh, uh, it'll be a case of like uh, adding them together, splitting it in half, and then we get an average out of the two. So, so yeah, uh, so yeah, uh, I'll so I'll go through my scores first. So, so yeah, I'll I'll go. So we'll cover each section um, uh, one one at a time. Uh, the sections, as always, there are story, characters, v- visuals, soundtrack, and uh, legacy. The legacy the film has uh, left, and then, and then from that we get the uh, percentage, and we see where it lands on uh, the board. Mm-hmm. So uh, the last film, so yeah, uh, the last film that I covered was the uh, the many, the last um, last film I covered was the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh. It was so close. It was so close. To a one hundred percent 
It was oh. so close. It got 98%, but still top three, only behind Fantasia and Sleeping Beauty. It deserves to be there. Love when yeah. Yeah, you'll see, because, I mean, and that's mainly because of the fact I gave the legacy section for uh, for many adventures of Winnie the Pooh and Eleven, just because of how right. big that franchise is yeah. from from just like the merchandise in general, from the toys and the, um, uh, the clothing, uh, the films, the TV shows, even the games as well. Yeah, you could say that besides the original Disney characters like your Donald, your Goofy and your yeah. Mickey Mouse, that Winnie the Pooh is... Up there as one, one of the, the most prolific. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, that being said, uh, the story, uh, the story I def- the story I gave I gave it a nine. Uh, the- there were I said there were like uh, I did have like one or two um, one or two faults with it, but uh, uh, n- n- it's n- nothing major. But uh, but overall overall a great story. I said, it did it did have its. It did have some uh, pretty I- I- intense moments here and there, but uh, but overall, I felt it was uh, I felt it was a, a great story overall. Same, uh, I thought it was. Uh, I also gave it a nine. It was, um, yeah, classic adventure. Yeah, um, a lot of great set pieces. Mm-hmm. Some of them are funny. Some mm-hmm. of them are sad. Yeah. Some of them are tight and intense. Yeah. Um, and my only issue is this, the pacing between those iconic moments can get a yeah. little bit dodgy. But mm-hmm. Yeah, no, you, you, f- you definitely feel the whirlwind of different emotions during mm-hmm. this, and it's only just over an hour long, so mm-hmm. yeah, you get everything that you want mm-hmm. in yeah. a small package. Indeed. Uh, the, char- the, characters I gave, uh, the characters I gave an eight, uh, uh, the, uh, the, bi- the biggest reason for that is mainly because the, uh, uh, the side characters that we get introduced to at the start of the second half of the film, we don't, re- we don't really see them uh, that much until uh, towards the end of the film. No. So I see th- those side characters in the bayou, we don't really, they don't really get much screen time for me. Mm-hmm. I gave them a six because... Outside a six? Of- wow. Yes. Yes, uh, it's just because outside of Penny, all the other characters feel very reminiscent of other Disney characters, and oh. even Bianca and Bernard, they don't really. I find them a lot better in the sequel. So, so outside of Penny, all the other characters in here are just a, a mixture of those two things. They feel similar. Or they're not as good as they end up becoming later on. Um, Very interesting. Yeah. So, so, so with that being said, that gets knocked down to a seven for the characters, mm-hmm. and and of course that's taking the that's taking the average of the two. Um, visuals, visuals. I gave it visuals. I gave an eight. Uh, I say because the um because like I say the, the painting I say the paintings like j- during the opening scene as well I say you could definitely have those paintings on on your uh, on your wall somewhere mm-hmm. but uh, yeah. but again the critics but again I have to dock the points off because of the recycled animation which is I say it, it's not the first time I've done it and it probably won't be it probably won't be the last. Mm-hmm. Um, I gave the animation a seven. It's just similar to you. It's just it's got that sort of sketchy feel that the the Disney films of this time had. Um, it is yeah. a bit better than a lot of the rest of them. I feel mm-hmm. uh, it does have a very the animation definitely fits the tone of the film. It is mm-hmm. very dark. Yeah. Uh, but again, I do feel the animation in the sequel is a vast improvement. Yeah. Um, but that might have just been because of. The leap in technology. Yeah, yeah, the, the big, the big leap in technology. Because, because the rescue is down under was also the first film to fully optimize the caps system. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, so, yeah, and 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 that is actually mentioned in the Guinness World Records. Is it? Yeah. Well, the Guinness World Record holder. <laughs> yeah, the rescue was down under the Guinness World Record holder for the first digitally animated film. I say, I say, they, they, I say, 
we have had, uh, we did have uh, Black Cauldron, Aldrin Company, and Little Mermaid, and Basil Grace Ma and the Grace Master Texas as well. Uh, those four, they do, they do utilize uh, computer animation to an extent. But but I will say uh, regarding uh, Great Mouse Detective, the uh, the sequence where they're inside Big Ben, yeah, no. you you wouldn't think you wouldn't think that was CG, you wouldn't think that was computer animated, because it still it still looks hand drawn. Yeah, yeah, no, it definitely has that look to it. Yeah, yeah. So the um, so the uh, the soundtrack. Uh, this is this, this is one where I this is one where I gave it the lowest. Uh, this is the lowest score that I gave it. Uh, gave this um, any of the uh, the five uh, topics uh, for this film. This one I gave it a seven. Uh, Res I say, uh, I've said I said earlier, Rescue Society not the most appealing to the ears, but the other songs are fantastic. Mm -hmm. And um, but the score it doesn't really stand out apart from yeah. like one or two moments. That, that I've that I did mention previously, and and that and that's really about it. Yeah, I also gave it a seven, primarily just for the exact same reasons that you gave. I do feel like mm -hmm. a lot of the well, two out of the four songs in this movie are very very underrated. Yeah, um, the opening one and the the one during the the big emotional scene. Those yeah, are two great songs. Mm -hmm. Um. And like you said, the soundtrack, uh, the score itself. Only I only really noticed it during the the cave dwelling sequence. Um, when we get the devil's eye. Yeah. And the uh, and the last the last one to cover is the legacy. Now, as is tradition when it comes to covering the legacy of the film, I uh, I, I go through I go through what it's done uh, mm. and what what it's had. Um, and then and then and then give the score, uh, based on that. So the uh, so box office earnings first. Let's get that out of the way. Uh, its initial run got uh, a worldwide total of forty eight million dollars. Um, uh, worldwide at the um at the box office. Um, and then it was re-released in 1983, get, getting it a total of uh, $21 million domestically, and then re-released -re again in 1989 to get it another $21.2 million domestically. Uh, the worldwide total, the worldwide total, uh, with taking all the re-releases into account, uh, totals up to a hundred and sixty-nine million dollars. So it was a it was a big success at the box office. The uh, the uh, yes, and uh, our and then our good friends over at Rotten Tomatoes, you've got the um, you've got uh, eighty-one percent on uh, Rotten Tomatoes. So yeah. So, so yeah, certified fresh. So mm -hmm. not bad there. Uh, as far as the accolades are concerned, it is very rare during this. It, it wasn't very often before the Renaissance period, especially that uh, Disney actually got nominated for some uh, uh, for some Oscars. And this is and this is one of those rare cases. Best original song for someone's waiting for you at the uh, 50th uh, Academy Awards in 1978 but it ended up losing to the um uh, the song uh, you light up my life from the film of the same name and it also got nominated in the uh, top 10 animated films list from the American Film Institute let's say the American right. Film Institute they do have uh, a lot of lists that have um the um, I, I actually have the list here in front of me of the films that are in the top 10 animated films. Uh, you've got Find... Say, and I'm going to go from 10 up to 1. You've got Finding Nemo, Cinderella, Shrek, Beauty and the Beast, Toy Story, Fantasia, The Lion King, Bambi, Pinocchio, and Snow White. And I, th no. I think... I think it doesn't really come... I don't. I don't... I think it doesn't really come as... Uh, too big a surprise that you got Snow White at the top because it was the first 
animated, uh, uh, full length animated film. And it was like Snow White was effectively the game changer as far as animation uh, yes. is concerned. And we wouldn't have such a big game changer until Toy Story came along mm. in 1995 and effectively made computer animation the new mainstream. Yep. <laughs> and the, the last piece, the last piece of legacy that this film has is, of course, the sequel, which we've, um, yes. which we have mentioned on a couple of occasions uh, throughout this episode. It got a, it got a sequel, The Rescuers Down Under, released during the uh, Renaissance period. Managed to sneak in there. Yeah. Uh, and the, the sequel doesn't often get acknowledged as part of the uh, Renaissance period, mainly because it wasn't as big a success as the, um, the, as, the uh, as, as the original was. But, uh, but see, this is this is one of those cases of uh, uh, this is one of those cases of not really. Uh, this is a film that often gets. It's it's not the first time it's happened throughout the the history of uh, Disney, especially during this era. It's a film that often gets overlooked, and mm. as if anything, overshadowed by the sequel. Uh, yeah. in, in in some ways, it's a good thing, but in others, not so much. Mainly because of the yeah. fact that it's um, mainly because of the fact. I mean, I mean, yes, the sequel is a lot better than the original, but it's it's another one of those cases where. It's as if the original does not exist to some yeah. people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, it's um, quite um, harsh. Yeah, unless unless you've got people like me who are like dedicated Disney fans, but not like super fan territory, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. if you will. But um, but but I will say, um, I will say, as far as uh, being uh, a dedicated fan is concerned, if I was doing like a, a, a name that tune round on like. Um, on like, on like a game show, I I just go into like proper show off territory, and it would because <laughs> uh, it would be a case that they they play they play part of a they play part of a Disney song, song title, character or artist depending on the version. Yes, some songs have mm. had different versions of them, especially during the Renaissance period. Um, what film it was in, the year the film was released, and if I'm feeling like a proper show off, right? Not now, Homer. <laughs> calling me a nerd honestly <laughs> if i'm feeling like a proper show off if it won any awards well mainly the oscars if, if it won any oscars yeah that's the only one that matters really. you see, that that's sort of that's sort of like the extent of my disney music knowledge especially mm-hmm. but yeah. overall taking all of it into account I gave the legacy an eight based on mm-hmm. everything that I've covered from what uh, the film has done, like the critical reception, um, if it had any like sequels or any, anything else in, uh, in terms of entertainment, like games, TV shows, mm-hmm. um, and, and the accolades it got nominated or nominated for or, or won. So yeah, let's say taking all of that into account, I gave the legacy an eight. I gave the legacy a seven. Um, ah. It's just mainly just the same points that you mentioned. Uh, it does get overshadowed by its sequel um, by a lot of folk, which I don't think is necessary because I do think that this film is very strong. Mm-hmm. Um, I would really like to see a TV show of The Rescuers, I feel. I think this is just begging to be a TV show. With Disney bringing back its old properties, I would very much like to see them try and make a rescue TV show. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's especially with especially with how the especially with how that first film ended. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, that in itself opens up a lot of opportunities to like uh, go on new assignments with Bernard and Bianca uh, later down the road. They will need to get they will need to get new voice actors to cover those roles, though. Well, because, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's to be expected. But I'll say, <laughs> I, I, another example of that. Is ba- the Great Mouse Detective the way that film yes. ended? You've yes. got a gold. You had. I mean, they had a golden opportunity right there to do a sequel to Great Mouse Detective or even a TV show. The opportunity was right there. Make a TV show of the Great Mouse Detective and the Rescuers, and then for like the 
their ten year anniversary, have them come for a crossover. Let's head over to Disney right now, Fraser, and we'll pitch this to whoever's the head of the studio now. Yeah. So I, th- I think... Um, Bob Iger, is it? No. Was he back in the past? Uh, Bob Iger was... Uh, uh, it's... Uh, the president... Oh, no, that's Walt Disney Resort. Ah! <laughs> Management of the Walt Disney Company. Yeah. Uh, Disney CEO Bob Iger, yeah, Bob, Bob Iger. Iger. That's that's the guy we need to speak to. That's yes. the guy we need to speak to to pitch these ideas. Yes, let's get him on the phone. Yeah, which begs the question: in regards to the Great Mouse Detective, especially on oh, no, the way they uh, they wouldn't be able to do Ratigan again because he got he got he got killed off yes. at the end of Great Mouse Detective. So, but yeah, uh, who could? I mean, I think I say again, the rescue was. It was a the, the rescue was, was a book series. Same with Basil of Baker Street. The opportunity is right there to turn it into a TV show. I mean, the, the, it probably it would probably end up being a, a CG TV show these days. Mm-hmm. Most but, likely, yeah. Yeah. And hey, it could. Hey, Disney Plus original folks. Oh yes. Mainly because of the fact that the, all the Disney channels are being closed down. Are they? Yep. We What's have no more Disney channels. Uh, it was like September 29th. It was September last year uh, that the Disney channels in the UK closed down for good. Jesus, I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah, and it was, um, and uh, during the course of that whole day, they um, they showcased a lot of the uh, Disney Channel original movies, like High School Musical and, yeah. uh, and the Descendants trilogy, uh, especially. Oh. I guess streaming's just a... Yeah. I got not now. Everyone's yeah. on Disney. So. Yeah, streaming. Yeah, streaming. Yeah, streaming is sadly the new norm. Um, be it be like using services like Netflix, Amazon Prime, Disney Plus, or like catch up on things like All Four and uh, BBC iPlayer, things like that. Um, but yeah. Um, what's it? I, I did briefly mention high. I did briefly mention High School Musical and Descendants. Yeah, uh, add those to the list of live action films to cover. <laughs> right, that's that. And I'll. Uh, I'll say. So yeah. Um. So yeah. All there. Oh yeah. I've just realised there's an idea for a Kingdom of Isolation special. What. Covering covering uh, a Disney Channel, give, covering a Disney Channel film to commemorate um, to commemorate one year in the UK since Disney Channel closed down in the UK. R.I.P. Yeah, this yeah, su- such a such a great such a great source for our childhood, especially one Kim Possible for me. Uh, yeah, I don't often bring this up, but yeah, Kim Possible. I was major crushing on. <laughs> yeah, crushing on. Yeah, crushing on a cartoon character. Granted, granted, granted. When I was younger, it was Ariel and Jasmine. Mm-hmm. Well, one of my favorite movies is uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit and uh, Jessica Rabbit. Part, uh, and we'll just leave it at that. Best. Yes, yes. Part we will just leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um, so yeah, we've got all. So we've got all the scores there. I've taken it all into account, and we end up with a grand total of seventy six percent. So it's unfortunately near the bottom of the pack as far as the um, films I've covered so far uh, are concerned. It is it is tied with uh, Fun and Fancy Free. But it is just behind uh, Peter Pan, which got seventy eight percent. It does have a significant lead over the Three Caballeros, which mm-hmm. got sixty eight percent. But yeah, I say it's it's not the best score that I've. Um, it's not the best score, but it's mm-hmm. definitely not the worst. No, nope, it's still a passing mark. Well, yep. over seventy percent is still an A. So, yep. I say because because uh, because oh, yeah it's over seventy percent and that is uh, classed as fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, I say and, and and I've actually got I've actually got that as sort of like a an, an I like a round idea for like uh, so like a, a movie based game show 
that I really? might that I might uh, do a couple of episodes on later down the road. Um, because I've got because I've, I've got like a round tile, um, um, because I've got I've got round names like show me the money for like how much a film got at the box office, uh, and um, lights camera action, which will be twenty. It will just be twenty questions on, mm-hmm. um, uh, like it could be either a a film actor or it could be a film character. Uh, mm-hmm. Twenty questions. Um, we're in the end game now. Uh, that would be just like, uh, like have it. Uh, see, uh, are you familiar with those Sporkle lists? No. Because no. well, so, there's a website called Sporkle, and they have like the. It's like um, uh, there's a. Uh, it's like it's effectively. Uh, a lot of a lot of the lists. A lot of the lists are user generated. Uh, like um, like. Uh, naming uh, character like uh, an example, naming characters that were part of the Disney Renaissance uh, period, and you've got to c- complete the whole list within like uh, a set time period. All right. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah. Put, we'll say uh, I'm, I'm not going to have a time limit for the uh, for the list per se, but I uh, will say like it could be like um, so yeah. Like, I say there's there's an example of a list I can do like, uh, mm-hmm. and it would be like an, an elimination round. I say uh, I go I go around the contestants uh, and I have. I have them like rattle off uh, characters. If someone gets a character wrong or a character that's already been mentioned, they're eliminated, and then right. it's, and 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 it's effectively a last man standing round. And uh, see, uh, the other round idea I've got is the uh, it'll be something along the lines of the tomato meter, mm-hmm. uh, as, as to whether a film was fresh or rotten according to the critics on Rotten Tomatoes, and for a bonus point, if it was fresh or rotten from the audience score. That's a very good idea. Yeah. If, if, if you do bring that idea to fruition, yeah. get me on there. Yep. I'll say, I'll say, hopefully, I'll say hopefully, hopefully I can get, hopefully I can uh, get that sorted at some point, but, but of course, because that's, that, but of course that, uh, and the, uh, the title of the, the title of the game show, The Film Fanatics, uh, tying in with the slogan for uh, for Odeon, fanatical about film. Yes, very on brand. Yeah, and then maybe the winner can win a, an Odeon gift voucher. Yeah. Uh, perfect. <laughs> That'll do nicely. There we go. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, that is it uh, for this uh, episode of uh, Kingdom of Isolation. If you enjoyed it, hit the thumbs up. And if and if you want to, uh, and if you want to be if you want to be part of the Kingdom of Isolation yourself, you can hit the subscribe button down at the bottom and click the bell to join the Dream Chasers notification squad so you don't miss anything that I do on this channel. The next episode, which we're going to be recording tomorrow, June second, is the Fox and the Hound. And then after that, I've got one film left, which is Oliver and Company, and then on to the Renaissance for the summer. On we go. Yeah. And until then, folks, we will see you guys next time in the Kingdom of Isolation. See you later.